Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Andrew from the Options Blender community. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're looking for a great way to increase your visibility on market conditions from day to day, I think this could be a video for you because today we're going to be going over the morning range. Now, the morning range is nothing unique. There's several traders out there from high level traders to low level traders that use some sort of variation of the morning range. But I'm just going to go over how I define it, how I trade it and how I use it to define the current environment that we're in from day to day. Now, what is the morning range? The morning range is the absolute high and low of the first hour of the day. So from 9.30 Eastern to 10.30 Eastern, you plot the absolute high price, the absolute low price of that first hour, including the wicks. As you could see right here, we have done just that. Plot the absolute high, plot the absolute low, and then trade off that. Now that's the easy part, just simply defining the range. But what you can actually do with that is define when you are in a sideways range day, a trend up day or a trend down day. Now I can sit here and kind of ramble on about what it is and the rules and stuff, but I think the best way to learn this is to kind of dig in and actually look at the charts themselves. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try not to cherry pick individual charts that make this look like an amazing thing because like in all things in trading, nothing's gonna work concrete. This is just simply a tool that's gonna to help you drive consistency from day to day a little bit better and to help you understand auction theory and structure around the market. So we're just gonna get started and kind of roll on day after day. Here's April 1st which is the start of this month. Now we're gonna be going over ES, which is the S&P futures minis, but you can apply this to pretty much anything you can trade with volume. Now in this particular session, we open up, we quickly put in a high, reject and come all the way back over until we eventually put in a nice little reversal candle here, and then obviously continue on down into a nice little trend down morning. Now, what does this mean for me and my definition? Well, the first thing I do is obviously you can't really play the morning range while it's forming the first hour. Up until the first hour is actually completed, you have to trade off for momentum, you have to trade off for whatever system you choose to trade. In my, in my personal opinion, I am a VPA trader, which is volume price analysis. And then once the first hour is formed, I go off of the gauge on what the price action is actually doing. In this case, we had the nice little sell. We put the pivot in here at 918 Central, 1018 Eastern time, right before we set the hour. And then we bounce back up and then sell back off again, which creates that morning low price because the 930 candle stops here is right there at 53.01. Now that this level is set, this is where I use this to determine, do I need to long here? Do I need to short here? Whichever it is. Now my first rule is I do not play breakdowns or breakouts on the first attempt because about 80% of breakouts and breakdowns actually fail and causes you to short the lows or buy the highs, which you don't wanna do obviously. So in this instance, when I'm applying the morning range for a trend down day, I'm looking for a rejection off of the prior support. In this case right here. So we sell back off. Uh, we have this one candle come up and then top wick back over and then reject back down. So that would be my indication that this is gonna be entering a trend down day and looking for lower prices at least until the afternoon begins. So we have a nice little rejection off here and then a sustained downtrend for 5,300 down into the 5,282. Now the real benefit here is that as we approach the afternoon, that probabilities say that we will not recapture the high prices once we hold under the morning lows going into the afternoon. And that's exactly what we've done here. We've set the first hour low, trended down. The buyer stepped in a little bit to chop us flat here, but we never actually come up and capture the highs here again. Now that could be beneficial for a couple of different ways. One, if you're a premium rider, you can write positions up in this area to gain some credit, knowing that the market's got some natural defense and probability is on your side not to recapture these prices. And two, as we go deeper into the afternoon, you could begin to drive some confidence of shorting off of this prior support test, now a new resistance. In the VPA world, we call this a support resistance flip. So as you go out the day, if the buyers continue to attack this 5,300, you can look for possible short opportunities off of this level. Now let's continue to look at other sessions. All right, here's the next session on April 2nd. And we have a very similar open at this point from the prior session. We have a little pop-up, rejection at the top, sell all the way back off and then put the morning low in, which culminates right about here. There's the 1030 mark. So a couple of minutes before the 1030 mark Eastern, 930 mark Central, we put a bounce in and then begin the slow little grind up. Now this was a rather slow session, very choppy on an upward trajectory here. And using the morning range, what this typically tells me is that the session is gonna be more of a choppier session. We don't have any major algo flows higher or lower and the auction is pretty much balanced right inside this mid 5250 range. So I'm not looking for any kind of major moves up to the bottom side or top side here. We're just gonna play it 
relatively choppy. And then of course we come up and touch that first pivot for the first time right before close and power hour. And we have a nice little quick rejection here to the tune of about five or six points. Nothing crazy. Again, this is a very slow mundane day. Eventually right before power hour, we do blast higher. But you can see that what still defines that morning high pivot here, you could have got a little bit of rejection if you are a scalper. Now there's two ways to really look at this when you're coming up to a level like this. If you like playing downside positions, you could grab a possible short here. And then once you come off here, obviously you don't know how far it's gonna reject. So you could begin to place your stops to see if you can recapture and move back down to the low, uh, or you just simply stop out if we come back up here. If you're someone who likes to long and does not like to short, that's fine. What this is gonna allow you to do is stay safe and not buying the initial breakouts. Uh, if you try to buy the initial breakouts like this, you're going to face this reversal quite often as we typically do not break out on the first attempt. In fact, 80% of the time, you're going to face some sort of rejection off of a prior algorithmic pivot such as this. We know that there's considerable amount of supply here because we've already had a nice waterfall rejection there right at the morning high, which is the first candle of the day. So there's going to be some supply that drops off here. And this morning range allows me to identify that level. And then, of course, we finally break above it. We have yet another rejection here. And as indicated by this wick, that tells us that we had another rejection where the sellers hit it and then they bottom wicked. That, that would be the retest to go long off of his prior range. I prefer to play the retest. So playing the retest off this bounce is a great entry to possibly long as we now are using a prior resistance as support. Let's take a look at another session. All right, this is the very next session, April 3rd. And you see right off the bat that we had a very strong bullish flow and we set the high right here, nearly right at the 1030 mark Eastern time. Note, these are central times you're seeing at the bottom because I'm in 10 central time zone. But you see we put the high in right before the 1030 mark. And then for the rest of the session, we hold right at this level. So again, I see that this is just another range day. A lot of people would see this as a strong trend up, but when you get this big flow right out of the gate and then pin flat, it's not necessarily a trend up day. We just had a little algorithmic flow in the beginning, and now we're pinned sideways, unable to break this prior pivot. In fact, every time we do, we have a sell-off, sell-off, and then eventually we the sellers completely absorb buyers and we have this rejection back down. Now, obviously, yes, you need to learn a little bit about some auction theory and price action theory to make this a lot more successful because knowing here that the buyers are unable to break through supply, that eventually the sellers are going to win out and refresh this price action back down before we can make another move, and that's precisely what happens. And then right before the power hour mark, the sellers hit this, drive this thing all the way back down, which would create a fantastic long opportunity somewhere in this area. We bottom wake, and then we come back up. That would have got you about 20, 25 points on ES, give or take, depending on where your entry was. Now, there's a couple of different ways to play this aggressively. If you want to play aggressive, knowing that this lower range here is there, you could put your limit buy order somewhere up in this area to buy the dip. You could play it a little bit more conservatively and put it right on the range, or you could be extremely conservative and place your limit order to buy and contracts well below the morning range to see if you can kind of get some liquidity sweep down into demand before you buy it up. Either way, this gives you a great representation of the algorithmic pivots to allow you to exploit these levels. And as we go further into the video, you'll see how consistent this can actually be if you apply this day to day. Now here is a session that turns from a range day into a very late trend down day. Now these are the lower probability days that they have a late break, whether it be a break to the upside or break to the downside. And this is where you can start being a little bit more analytical in these trades. But we start the day off here. We have some nice algorithmic pivots. We have we set the pivot on these two, and then we come down and have a test there at 1015, which provides a fantastic long entry. We come up at top week right at the prior pivot here, the morning high, and then we have we sell off here. So either one of these would have created fantastic opportunities. And then right here, if you were to exploit this long and try to long this opportunity, you would see we had a nice little hammer candle that started to look like a great opportunity to come back up here, but then quickly gets smoked. So this is where you would have a stop out opportunity. So for me, if I wanted to long this morning low, I would do so and then set my long somewhere outside of liquidity zones because I don't want to necessarily get out just because we have a red candle. But on this type of candle, yes, I would like to get out because this is a little bit more into liquidity here, especially as we fail even lower. And that really depends on your style on stopping out of trades. But I personally like to set my stops on any longs below any prior liquidity. So if they do decide to execute a liquidity sweep, they don't grab my stop. They just grab the people that are not necessarily trading on theory. But you see, they finally do sweep this low. And this turns into a very, very aggressive sell off the entirety of the session. This was a very, very strong waterfall event that occurred on Thursday, April 4th. But in this opportunity here, if you did want to take a short off of it, this is where it would be the retest. Now what a retest occurs right here where we have the red, you would have stopped out. We had another green come back up and then this top wick, 
using that prior support now as resistance, which is in the, in the VPA world called a support resistance flip, this is where things start to become a little bit bearish or sell here. If they do transact this on a top wick and come back over, now you want to start looking at a possible short opportunity here as you've seen the bearish flow is really starting to come in. And this is where they use that opportunity to flush all the way back over. Now, obviously, again, you have to be Johnny on the spot with this kind of analysis here. And especially if you're doing multiple time frame analysis from the three minute to the five minute, all the way up to the 15 minute, you can identify these levels. But something to consider here is, again, I keep repeating the, re the retests. You want to enter off the retest. And that is where you're going to get some high confidence entries that's not going to get stopped out so repeatedly. Is that instead of playing the initial breakthrough, you want to wait for it to actually break through bounce back up and retest in the area of prior activity, a pivot level, in this case support, and then short on the way down. That way you avoid the major sweeps and you stop shorting the lows on a big bounce or shorting or buying the highs on a big reversal. All right, here's the very next session after that big red waterfall, which is April 5th, 2024. And this is a fantastic way that the market begins a trend up after the morning session. So we have the first high and low put in, the market puts in the first rejection, another retests, and then another retest. So, and if you look here, we have the first form and then fail. We have the second test, rejection and fail. We have a third test, and this one rejects as well, but they bottom wick it back up, come back up, and then finally blast. Now, this is where knowledge of on auction theory really comes into place, because in my mind, what we have here is a bit of supply right here. And every time the buyers hit it, hit it, hit it, we are nibbling away at that supply until it finally breaches. And that's exactly what happens here. The more aggressive the moves, the more aggressive the absorption of that particular supply. And finally, on this last touch, we blast through. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily could enter here. If you're a little bit more aggressive and you see this constant aggressive attack, these aren't little tight moves. These are pretty aggressive moves. When they finally do get the attack, an aggressive person might long here with this little bottom wick to see if we get the explosion. However, if you're not already in, then you can enter on the retest. And that's exactly what occurs here. Just be patient and wait for the sellers to hit that thing and then retest that prior range to give you a nice confident indication that the buyers are in fact transacting through supply for a trend up. And that's what happens here. We have the blast up, we have the sell back off here, and then a nice little bottom wick to give you a great entry at this prior morning high level. That morning high level constantly gives you pivots on which the algorithm set the morning high and low, and then you can enter off of it on a retest to capture the true move up that's already been abated by the sellers. Now, what does all this mean? Just take a step back for a second. Why did these levels actually do this? Well, we know that the first hour and the last hour of the sessions are incredibly volatile relative to the rest of the market, typically. That's why we get the morning open and the big volume comes in. The market shakes and bakes a lot. We have a lot of fluttering in price action because the first hour and the last hour are where institutions are participating in. That's when they're hedging their positions. That's when they're managing positions from the prior session and typically doing most of their transactions. So I call that the algorithmic pivots. When they set the low and high for the first hour, that tells me where their algorithms collectively, of course, are setting their support and setting their resistance. We don't know why or how, but we know that the market pivots at those levels the first hour. And then the key word is with volume. That's where the big volume is for the day. And that's where volume translate to participation. I want to trade where the general market is participating at, not the little high frequency traders in the middle. I want to trade where the big volume participation is occurring at the high and low every day. And that's what I want to exploit. And that's the whole concept behind the morning range. Let's take a look at one more example and we'll call it a day. All right, this is a session from April 10th, 2024. And you see that the buyer stepped in and put the high and low in. And then this turns into a day that stays within the range the entire session. Now, when you see levels being tested high and low multiple times like this, it begins to build your confidence on exploiting these levels. Now, typically they're not as aggressive as this. These, this would have been an optimum day for trading the range because we have these big sweeps that would have got you profitable very quickly without much fear of being in a lost position because we didn't have any drawdowns. If you would have long the bottom and top, you would have had very, very little drawdown on these trades. So this would have been the optimum scenario for trading the range on a range day. We have a sell-off, we have another sell-off, we have a buy-up sell, you see the point here. But this is another example of trading the ranges and the associated price action around it. And then, like I said, you could trade different time frames, like this, for example, switching over to the 15 minute, you see that there's even more confirmation on these candles here, where we top wick and bottom wick and top wick and bottom wick, exploiting the high and the low. But when you tie this in with volume analysis, when we have a lighter volume day that typically rejects and bounces, you can anticipate playing inside the range for the rest of the day. If we begin to have high volume spikes, high volume anomalies that start clearing out, then you can maybe anticipate the trend breaking up or down into the last half of the day. 
Here's another example of a trend down day, which we're going to finish with here. Uh, obviously, we had a pretty heavy pre-market here, and then you see the market open, and we set the high, and we set the low, and then breach lower. These are 15-minute candles, mind you. So this is another great example that when you start clearing out that pivot and breach lower, now we have weak buyers here. And then knowing what we know about the morning range, about the institutions putting in the pivots in the first hour with volume, why do you think this actually rejects right here? Because we have people that are weak-handed right now. We have weak buyers sitting right here at this level. Why? Because they attempted to buy the dip. They attempted to buy this level, maybe thinking that the prior pre-market pivot right here would provide some sort of support. So the market blows through there. Those positions are now in a pretty decent loss. They're desperate to get out. The market bounces back up here. And they, seeing finally seeing a break even because they're long, they start selling off positions. We now have that prior support is now used as a resistance here because the weak people got out and the shorters start to hit again. And then we sell back off. Either way, we have a fantastic rejection right on top of this morning low, which, which confirms us into a trend down afternoon. And that's exactly what happens. We drop from almost 5,200 on down to 5,150, which would have been approximately a 50 point move down on the S&P, which is a fantastic trend down day, especially in the environment we've had the past couple of months. But trying to observe these pivots and why they're happening with the wicks, especially on the chart on the 15 minute, like we're dealing with now, could greatly help your awareness on identifying market conditions for a trend up, trend down, or range and exploit those levels. Now, if you can tie this into your system, if you have some success in whatever you're using, maybe even some possibly an EMA or two, you could really start to drive consistency and awareness for the market on understanding what's going on here. And to summarize what some rules with this is that for one, remember, it's the first hour of the day from 930 Eastern to 1030 Eastern, the absolute high price, the absolute low price, including the wicks, set those and trade off of them for the entire session. Rule number two, if we enter into a trend down day such as this into the afternoon hours, the probability of recapturing the high price is very, very low. Use that information for however you can benefit from it. If you're a premium rider, write premium very high. If you're someone who likes to buy the dip and we do start to recover a little bit, understand that the possibility of getting back up to this level is a very low probability and you need to start taking profit before we get up to that area or at least setting your trailing stops. Don't be so aggressive. Now, sometimes, yes, it will happen, but I would probably say less than 5% of all sessions actually occur by putting in a low and then rebounding and putting back on another high of the day. Usually if it does happen, it happens around volatile events like CPI or FOMC or OPEX, something along those natures. And the same rule applies for trend up. So once we break into a trend up into the afternoon, the probability of entering back to the low of the day is very, very low. So again, use that information to your benefit. If you're a premium writer, begin to write premium down in this area that you can defend. If you like to short and this market does start to roll back over, that you need to start taking profit well before here or at least setting your stops so you're not so aggressive to hold on for the low and get bounced on. And rule number three, if you enter into a trend, whether it be trend up or trend down, you use the corresponding level as support or resistance depending on its short down or up. In this case, this was a trend up, so I'll be looking for the prior morning range high, which was here, to be used as support. Now, in this case, it was used on the money one time and a little bit close right here on this one. Either way, I've been looking for a bounce somewhere in this area and we got it just before hitting the morning high. If this was a trend down day on any kind of bounces, I would look for this morning low to be used as resistance for a possible short entry or closing out longs if you played the bounce back up. This is a pretty simple and effective system you can apply to your strategy day after day. I hope it's helped you. If you have any questions, please email me optionsmillionaire2020 at gmail.com. You can come over and join the Discord and DM me anytime. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Or please comment down in this video and I'll respond with any help that I can offer. I hope this has helped you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I hope you continue to learn and trade smart and become prosperous. Until next time, I'm out. See you.